CLNS Media Patriots Roundtable. I am one of your co-hosts, Nick Qualia, here with Marvazan and Mike Molino. We're recording this Tuesday, September 7th, leading up to week one of the NFL season. Finally. We're not we're you know what? We're still gonna have to fight our way to find some topics occasionally, but it's gonna be much easier now. Much, much easier. So guys, I mean no more Cam Newton, Mac Jones. It's just Mac Jones. It's the Alabama Bowl this week to lead it off. Mac Jones versus Tua. Big week. So leading into the NFL season, I wanted to talk about this. Get your overall thoughts on the season, mainly just an outlook, because it's a lot different than last year. You, you head into last year, you don't have too many weapons. Really any. You have almost no weapons. Uh You've got Cam Newton, a quarterback, which we were excited about to start. But then, you know, especially post-COVID Cam, things didn't really work out the way that we hoped. The season ended up – the games the games really started to become close to unwatchable. It was bad. It was brutal. But you spend a ton in the offseason. Day one of free agency, Bill Belichick goes out and spends a ton. You got two solid tight ends. You've got receiving threats now. And you've got Jacoby Myers, who's already here, and he seems to be getting better and better as the years go on with him. So, guys, let's talk about that. Give me a record prediction. Are they making the playoffs? Give me everything. Just brain dump your thoughts on the Patriots heading into this season. Either one. I mean, I think we could all together just go down the schedule right here and just, you know, we can tally up our wins and losses and see see what we got them. I think I had the Patriots in the, in in the playoffs. Looking at the schedule back with a quick glance, they should they should get over ten wins. Um, first game against the Dolphins. Do we all believe they win that game? I am going to be picking the Patriots to beat the Dolphins. I also My, have, I also have the Patriots beating the Dolphins week one. Yeah, that's at home. That's a win. Then you go face the Jets at at New York. But mm, first, first year rookie, I got the Patriots winning that as well. Some people are high on Zach Wilson, though. No, yeah, they are. Not against the Patriots. Yeah, they are. I heard someone tell me recently he's the best quarterback taken in the draft. That's because it doesn't matter against Bill. (laughs) Rookies, rookie quarterbacks don't beat Bill Belichick often. Yeah, I also have the Patriots beating the Jets and starting off the year two and zero. So we got two and zero. Then we then we face the Saints, and you're facing the Saints at home. Saints have no offense, but Camaro. I got the Patriots winning that game too. And are they going to be back at home at that point? Remember, they're not going to be. Oh wait, are oh wait, are the Patriots we're, we're, home? The we're, Saints, host, we're, we're hosting the Saints. Hosting. Oh, I thought you meant I thought you meant Saints were at home. Uh, see that one's that one I think is going to be tough because I'm super interested to know what Jameis Winston looks like this year. Listen, the guy had eye surgery. He can see now. <laughs> this is Mr. 30 for 30. There's no he may throw 30 interceptions, but he can launch some bombs. And good for him. But I also have the Patriots beating the Saints at home and starting off the year 3-0. Yeah. All they got to do is focus on Alvin Kamara, and I think that will be taken care of. Patriots 3-0 for me. That one's that one's going to be tough. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 2-1. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then you got the Buccaneers. I'm not gonna make this long. Patriots lose that game. Three and one. I have it. <laughs> Let's not get it twisted here. I, I firmly believe Tom Brady is gonna be on his. He's always on his A game. We know that. But I, I think he's gonna have the extra spice he's cooking with when he shows up to Gillette. And we it already might, know overall. It might that, be the best. It might be the best Tom Brady we've ever seen. And you know, I won't be mad at it. Like it is what it is. And that offense just overall, take away the fact that they're facing the Patriots and Brady's going back to Gillette. That offense is probably the best offense in the NFL. I have the Patriots at three and one at that point. You know who I think you know who I really wouldn't be shocked if he's not not back to what he was, but pretty damn close. A B. I think Antonio Brown is going to pop yeah. off this year i have the same prediction i think ab's gonna eat he's gonna be back which is not listen an offense with mike evans chris godwin and antonio brown being thrown to by tom brady scary 
and and, and even if Not one good. of them, even if one of them happens to miss a, a game or some time due to injury, it's still solid. You take out AB, you're still walking with Evans and Godwin. You take out Godwin, you're still walking with AB and Evans. You take out like it's still clicking and it's still solid either way you look at it. So, yeah, three and one for me at that point. Next. I guess I'm two and two. All right, then you got the text. If you go to Texas, one o'clock game. Listen, man, that's gonna be the worst team in the NFL. Patriots winning that game. I now have them at four and one. I also have Patriots four and one beating the Texans. And nobody should lose to the Texans this year. So you nobody. Three two. Uh, yeah, three and two. Then you come back home, and this is a tough one here. It's gonna be another big game. Cowboys come to Gillette. Oh, you find a way to win. Five the, Cow- find, find the Cowboys are tough this year. The Cowboys are tough. They, that, that offense is going to be clicking. But I just believe in the Patriots defense. I don't trust I don't trust Dallas at all. I think Patriots can find a no. way to win that game. So I have it five and one. I Yeah, you know, I'm going to give them that one, too. I'm going four and two. I'm also but, one man, two. Dak is what – Dak is – I mean, this is – it's not really a hot take, obviously, but – Dak's the X factor. Like, how is he going to bounce back from this injury? Like, that was a brutal injury that he had. Yeah. So he's brutal good. injury. And then next to that, once he got hurt, you know, obviously you lose that great talent in Dak. But then Ezekiel Elliott just didn't care anymore. He, he Oh, he, yeah. He, he checked out once he knew that Dak was gone in the office. He checked out. But this time around, while you do say, yes, Dak is the X factor, if you have an Ezekiel Elliott who's supposedly in better shape this year and he's locked in, you know, that offense can do some serious damage, but them coming into Gillette and the question mark still with how healthy Dak is and, you know, just the offense in total. I'm, I have the Patriots at five and one after that game. Yeah. I mean, Hey, I traded a first round pick for Zeke right before Dak got hurt, right before he got hurt. And yeah. believe me. Yeah, no, I could tell Zeke checked out big time. He didn't give a damn no more. No fantasy points drops <laughs> terribly. <laughs> And then the following week, you you stay at home, and the Jets come back. Once again, <laughs> I have the Patriots winning, and we in seven we're seven weeks in, and I have Patriots six and one. I also have Patriots six and one. I think they're going to start off hot, and it's going to be a shocker to a lot of people. And you're going to have some people who are saying, "I can't believe that the Patriots have gotten off this hot, start up the season so hot." And then you're going to have some people say, "Well, look." Here goes Bill Belichick doing what he does best with a good team. He has a quarterback that he likes. You know, it might it might not be a shock to some people, but I do also have them at six and one coming off of that Jets game. Yeah, I got them five and two. The Jets, the Jets are the Jets are very similar to the Mets. They'll figure out a way to lose. And you know what? You can clip that if you want, but they will figure out a way to lose. They do it constantly, just like the Mets. No, next game is quite interesting. You go, you go to Los Angeles, and you're facing the Chargers. Oh, the Chargers that the, that beat you down last year. You're going in this six and one. You're on a high. I think you find a way to beat the Chargers as well. And now I have them at seven and one. I'm at six and two here. I think they're going to face the Chargers. I think Herbert continues to be. You know, a surprise. No one thought he was going to be as great as he was coming off of last season. I think he's going to come into this next year still as hot. You know, they still have weapons over there with with um, uh, uh, what am I drawing? Keenan Allen is still a solid receiver. I think Eckler is coming in with a chip on his shoulder this year. Uh, I think they fall to the Chargers, and that game's in um, in Los Angeles as well. So I'm I'm taking. I'm seeing the Patriots lose that game to the Chargers. So that's six and two. Yeah, I'm giving them the loss too. The, the, the Chargers, right? I'm not I'm not misremembering this, right? The Chargers beat them down last year. No, we beat the Chargers down bad last year. We like beat them Did we? 40, 40 to six or something like that. Yeah, that was Listen, the maybe that was, that was the game Herbert couldn't do anything against the Patriots. Herbert's not a rookie anymore. Hey, so yeah. Listen, I I guess. I guess I just expected them to lose so much. Maybe I just was watching that game. Oh, yeah, they did. What am I talking about? Yeah, we killed the Chargers. Four, <laughs> what am I talking 45 to nothing. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> All right, forget that. Uh, 
I still, I, I, I think Justin Herbert's going to take a leap this year. I think he's going to be even better than he was last year. He is I'm well. going to give that one. How did, I don't even understand what game I'm thinking about. I got to be thinking about a, a different game. But no, I, I got to go. I think I'm going to pick the Chargers here. I think the Chargers are going to be better than they were last year. So you have them, what, five and three? Five and three. Mike has six and two. Six and two. And I got them seven and one. I'm the most optimistic right now. Then you face, then you go to North Carolina, face the Panthers. That's a win. I have another win for the Patriots. I don't think. That's a win. I'm, I'm not big on, um. what's the quarterback over there right now? Sam um, Darnold. Darnold. I'm not big yeah. on Darnold. The weapons there, I just, their defense is horrid. Yeah, Patriots win that game. That should, yeah, that should definitely be a win. I'm at seven and two. I'm taking the win there as well. All right, then we got the Browns. You face them at home. I think I'm, I'm high. This is the first year I'm high on the Browns, and I really like how they constructed their team. I think Patriots lose this game, and now I think I have them at eight and two. Yep, I'm at seven and three. I also feel like I've liked the Browns the last couple of years. Your NASCAR just went by Mike's window. Even after it was 500, I was aside. But yeah, I think we didn't we didn't hear a damn thing that you said in the middle of that. <laughs> I'm high on the Browns as well. I'm thinking Odell Beckham comes back and returns to form. He also has a little a more seasoned Baker Mayfield. We know that what their combination is at running back. Uh, I see the Patriots losing this game to the Browns, and now I have them at seven and three, I believe. See, I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm catching up with Mike because I'm going to give them the win here because this is, I'm high. I'm so high on the Patriots defense. I think that they can handle this, especially. And at that point, too, depending on the, the contract situation, I guess it kind of contradicts what I said about the Chargers game. But Stephon Gilmore being back potentially for that game is a game changer. Not exactly that game, but at that point, I think he would have a couple games in. I'm going to give him the win. Mm, interesting. So next, the week after that, that's a Thursday night game against the Falcons. Patriots win in that game. You're facing they, they have Atlanta, to. But you're, you're, beating, you're beating Matt Ryan in that team that's not really fully developed yet in a transition rebuild mode. You're beating the Falcons. So now I have them at 9-2. and two. I'm at I'm at eight and three. I think Falcons still have nightmares when it comes to the Patriots, especially if Matt Ryan's still the quarterback. They have nightmares. It's eight and three for the Patriots. Yeah, I'm eight and three. I just I I don't I don't see the Falcons bouncing back. They, they've got Calvin Ridley, but they did also lose Julio Jones. Hmm. Speaking of Julio Jones, we see them the following week against the Titans at home. I have the Patriots lost this one. I have the Patriots dropping this one. I, I really like what the Titans are doing. I think their defense got a little better. They're not great defensively, but Ryan Tannehill and those weapons, especially with Derrick Henry, uh, it's going to be tough. Now I have the Patriots at 93. I'm at 8-4. and four. I also see a loss coming to the Tennessee Titans. Offense is high power. They're riding the wave off the last couple of seasons. I think it just continues, especially you add Julio to the mix. I have the Patriots losing and dropping to 8-4. and four. Yeah, so do I. I think I think that I think the Titans are going to be a very good football team this year. But my hot fantasy take this year, I think Derrick Henry is going to drop, not not like to nothing, but significantly. I just don't. You can't repeat what you did last year. He and did, if he does, the guy's an absolute freak. He repeated it two years in a row. Yo, yeah, well, you you want it again? You want three? <laughs> I mean, there's not going to be as much pressure on him because now you have two elite options at wide receiver. So do they need to hand him the ball every single – well, the majority of the times like they did in the previous two seasons? You have A.J. Brown and now Julio Jones, who's a complete obvious upgrade from Corey Davis. Um, I think he'll still be solid, but does he get the amount of carries that he did previously in season before? Probably not. Yeah, I just I, – I think he's going to see a significant drop. Not because of, him, because of the offense. I don't. I don't know. Listen, he's beaten the crap out of his body the past couple of years. Like we we've seen we've seen running backs do this. We've seen running backs perform at an ex, ex, significantly high level and then just fall off. I don't think he's going to fall off like that because I do think he's an absolute freak. But I wouldn't be shocked if this is a year that we see a a significant drop off in his fantasy numbers specifically. 
That'll be interesting to um, check out. Next, we have finally, all the way to December, we finally faced the Bills for the first time at Buffalo. I had the Patriots splitting with them, so I have them losing this game. Um, yeah, I've got them losing that too. And so now I believe I'm at nine and four. Eight and five for me. Eight and five for me as well. And this is going to be what? So we both have them losing two games in a row. That's when the media is going to start getting a little, a little feisty on the well, Yeah, we have them losing two games in a row to two potential potential playoff teams. So yeah. that doesn't that doesn't matter to the media <laughs> <laughs> or social media. Doesn't matter who you lose to. Where do you stack up against the Titan and Bills if they lose these back to back games? Uh, they are they that on the level? You know, the conversation will be there. Oh man, and Twitter. Some of Twitter is going to be calling for Cam Newton too. Cam Newton wouldn't have lost those games. Tell you that right now. Man. And then after that, this game is the is really interesting to me. Patriots at the Colts. Coming off of maybe a two-game spurt, facing Indianapolis is probably going to be in the bubble as well as a playoff team. <sighs> I think I'm going to give them a win. I, yeah. I'm giving them a win. It out. So that's 10 and 4 for me. I have them at not, uh, nine and five. Nine and five. Yeah, nine and five. I'm giving them the win as well. Then you face the um, Bills at home. Like I said, I have them split in, so I have the Patriots winning one of them. And so now I have them at 11 and four. Nine and seven. They lose to the Bills again. I Yeah, I, I got them split in two. I'm going to give them a win. I think, the, I think they're going to figure it out. One of these games against them. Yeah, I don't think they lose to the Bills twice. They you they very well might. The Bills are going to be a good team. They're going to be a good ass team. We had them figured out last year. We just didn't have a quarterback. That's true. People forget that Cam Newton fumbled the ball. <laughs> you, you know, not to not to put the blame on him, but they were they were marching. <laughs> oh man! And then you end off the season with the with the Jaguars. And the Dolphins. So I got Patriots being the Jaguars and losing to the Dolphins at home. And that makes me what? 12 and 5? So I know. Have... Sorry, you go, Mike. I have them beating Jacksonville, which gives them 10 and 7. No, that's what did I say? 9 and 7 coming off the Bills game? I'm trying to remember. What a world. You're you're one behind me right now. So I'm at nine and seven. Uh sure. Nine and seven. So I have them beating Jacksonville, which gives them ten and ten and seven. And then Dolphins, I have them winning that game as well. So that puts that puts the Patriots at eleven and six. I'm sorry. Yeah. Eleven and six. Eleven and six. Eleven and six. I, I have them ending the season eleven and six. I'm at the same one. I think they're going to lose to the Dolphins, too, and beat the Jags. Yeah, same. Although, well, I mean, hey, I think that, that Jaguars offense might – they might be something. That, what does that mean? They've got <laughs> some weapons. They've got they've got some solid receiving threats. I like Trevor Lawrence a lot. And uh, in the run game, James Robinson, solid. There's been a lot of quarterbacks, young quarterbacks, that have been solid. But they're facing – a rookie quarterback facing Belichick. I don't care how good Trevor Lawrence is. Belichick's track record shows that if you're a rookie quarterback going against the Patriots in that game's in Gillette, I believe. Yes, that game is in Gillette. Yep, in Gillette. Yeah, I'm sorry, Trevor Lawrence. You can have a great season and whatnot, but you're facing Belichick, the Patriots at Gillette Stadium. You're losing. Mike, eleven and six, and then Mar. No, what were you? Five. I was twelve and five. Honestly, before we did this, that's what I was going with anyway. I was thinking eleven and six, and we're gonna screw up some here and there for sure. Some of them they're gonna win that we that we called losses, and then vice versa. But listen, I think they're a playoff team this year. Yeah, I think they're gonna get in. Looks like it. Yeah, maybe wild card. Um, like yeah, I think they're a playoff team. Are they on the same level as the Chiefs? Nah, kind of. Are they on the same level as? Baltimore? Uh, I don't think so. Are they on the same level as Tennessee? Nah, not yet. And then in their own division, they're they're not better than the Bills. 
Miami Patriots. I don't think Miami's going to be that good. I Miami's think they're going to be a tough team. In the division. Miami's going to be a tough team. Their defense is going to is going to cause people trouble. I think Miami's going to be a team people sleep on. Maybe, yeah, maybe, and I'm going to be one of them. I just don't think they're going to be that good. I just have such a tough time. Yeah, you know, I'm 27. This is all I've watched in my my most of my entire life has just been the Patriots just steamrolling everybody. I've just got a tough time thinking that the Jets and Dolphins are going to be good football teams. Oh, Jets! I'm not I'm not paying any attention no. to the Jets. Dolphins, I'm not saying they're they're going to be in the basement of the East, but I think them and the Patriots, they're they're right around each other. Bills obviously are holding the top, but Miami and New England, I think they're they're very close right now. What about Mac Jones, rookie of the year? Nah, has an opportunity. He I think opportunity. I think he's he'll be up there. Yeah, he has the perfect I, opportunity. If he can get his team to be 11 and 6, 12 and 5, well, he'll be in conversation. He'd have to be. Yeah, I don't see anybody or any of these rookie quarterbacks who get in the start. I don't see any of them necessarily running away with the job. I think the the rookie of the year award, I mean, I think it's very much so up for grabs. I think Mac Jones can play well within the system and he has weapons to work with. I think um, Lawrence Najee Harris. <laughs> Najee, Harris, Najee Harris also in a good position um, with with uh, Pittsburgh and I think um, Trevor Lawrence has a good opportunity yeah, will the Jaguars be a playoff team no but he might still put up some solid numbers over there and he just automatically has all the hype around him so that already adds a little you know more more fuel to his fire so I don't think anybody is necessarily going to run away with the rookie of the year award but Mac Jones can definitely be in the conversation when it when it comes down to it hi guys we got football season this yeah. week. This time next week, we're going to be talking about the Patriots Dolphins post game after game one. Can't That's wait. exciting. Can't wait. Yo, real, real quick, before we get out of here, man, rest in peace, David Patton. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Patriots hero, Patriots legend. Um, grew up watching the Patriots, and David Patton was was very, you know, was one of the guys. One of the guys won us the Super Bowl against the Rams. Um, heartbreaking to hear about his loss in the motorcycle accident. Praying for his family and everyone, all of his loved ones, for real, man. Yeah, it's yeah, tough. for sure, for sure. J David Patton, Troy Brown has always been my favorite receiver all time, but David Patton was that that next guy there, and I remember playing those early. Early, early Madden games, playing with the Patriots, and it's just David Pat and Troy Brown. Those are the two guys that I had running with, you know, when I had my little franchise going. But yeah, David Patton, man, he was he was huge for the team in those early Patriots teams in the 2000s. So yes, rest in peace. Your praise. He's up. got he's got one of the best. Uh, he's got one of the best highlights Ooh, in this Patriot dynasty from yeah. from the the Super Bowl against the Rams. Beautiful catch, beautiful catch, beautiful throw by Brady and beautiful catch by David Patton. Really good catch by David Patton. That was that was not easy to come down with. Yeah, it's a great route. He ran a great route. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you on this media. Patriots roundtable. Nick Qualia, Marvzon, and Mike Milano. Guys, we're going to be back next week after the Patriots' Week One win or loss, predicting win against the Miami Dolphins, the Bama Bowl this Sunday. We will talk to you next week, guys. Thank you for watching. <laughs>